Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. My name is Chaz Andres, and as always, let's get started with the news. And the biggest story of this week is that the Commander 2019 exclusive cards are finally out on MTGO. Granted, they've only been out for a couple of days as of this recording, but it is time to take a look at which cards are trending upwards so far, and which ones might be nice under the radar pickups. Well, so far, it's been all Rakdos all the time. The two best Rakdos commanders, Chainer Nightmare Adept and Angie Falconrath, are leading the pack by a pretty wide margin. In fact, they're the only two cards in Commander 2019 right now that are up over the 10 ticket mark. And that's not all. Even the worst Rakdos commander, the new Greven, is the fifth most valuable card in the set at the moment. So yeah, people really want to play Rakdos in Commander, at least on MTGO. Now, if you're looking for a deal on a Commander 2019 card, maybe take a look at Dockside Extortionist. This Goblin Pirate is currently the most expensive card in Commander 2019 in Paper Magic, but it hasn't really taken hold on Magic Online yet. It actually started at about five tickets, but it's down now to about three and continuing to drop. I'm not saying it's a slam dunk to make it into Legacy or Vintage, in fact that might be unlikely, but heck, if any card in Commander 2019 is going to make a splash in competitive eternal play, it might be this one. Now, there are potential reasons for it to be cheaper on MTGO than in Paper Magic. For example, rarity. In Paper Magic, Commander 2019, there's no real difference between rares and mythic rares. They each just appear in one deck. But on Magic Online, because of the treasure chest system, wizards can actually increase the number of rares relative to the number of mythics. So it's possible that that's the reason for this card's drop. Regardless, I like it as a buy at three tickets. Now, in general with Commander 2019, we discussed last week that the best time to buy these cards was either immediately after they were released or a few months later once the market is full saturated. And at this point, I'm angling on a few months later for most of these cards, especially the ones that are currently trending up past the 8 to 10 ticket mark. You can buy in now if you like, these are excellent long-term holds regardless, but there are going to be stronger buying opportunities once that market is fully saturated before Wizards cuts these out of treasure chests again. Let's move on now to gaining ground, where in Standard it was Karn the Great Creator surging 9 full tickets from 20 back up to 29. And I say back up because this was our biggest loser a couple of weeks ago, and I told you it was likely to rebound soon because, you know, there weren't really any strong metagame reasons for its drop. Turns out I might have been conservative with that prediction because back in July this card peaked at about the 25 ticket mark and right now it's heading up toward 30 and showing no signs of slowing down. Now I honestly don't know what Karn's ceiling is. His trend line is pointing straight up at the moment and it was a top seller this week, number 7 overall by price. That said, War of the Spark is going to be leaving the set redemption window in about a month and you know there's going to be some volatility through that. The thing to know is that Karn is one of the most important cards in Modern, I don't see that changing anytime soon, and short term, I think this is going to be heading toward the 40 ticket mark. I'm still not buying in though, because these recent cards, the volatility is just so high, and I'm scared of things just sort of going up and down by wild margins every week just because the MTGO economy, at least for standard cards, is so volatile. So yeah, buy in now if you need it short term. If you want these just at some point over the next six months, my guess is it'll be back below that 30 ticket mark again. Let's move over to Modern now, where the biggest gainer of the week was Prismatic Vista, gaining 3 tickets from 10 up to 13. And after sort of bouncing around for the first couple of months of Modern Horizons release, this card seems on the cusp of some fairly major movement. It was about 7 tickets back in mid-July, and it's mostly been gaining since then, with its biggest gains happening over the past couple of weeks. And there are metagame reasons for this. This card does see play as a fetch land in most of the blue and white base decks in Modern and Legacy, and you know, can't blame them, it's a really good card. So the financial future of cards like this are always going to be more dependent on the future drop rate and treasure chests than I'd like, but it's not like 13 tickets is that high a buy-in for a Modern staple, especially one that was in Modern Horizons. And yeah, lands always tend to be a little bit cheaper on MTGO than they are in Paper Magic, so I don't think this one's going to be, you know, 20, 30 tickets at any point soon, but stability in the 15 to 16 ticket range seems likely to me, and that makes it a pretty safe buy-in around 13. 
Let's move on now to our biggest loser, where in standard it was Finale of Promise for the second straight week, though the drop wasn't as bad this week. It only dropped three tickets from 34 down to 31. And I think a large part of this is simply that other cards in War of the Spark are Ascendant right now. You've got cards like Karn, which we talked about earlier, Blast Zone, even Dreadhorde Arcanist is getting back on that gain train. All of these cards gained at least three tickets this week. Now, like I said last week, I'm not touching Finale of Promise until after the next Modern Band and Restricted announcement. If WotC acts as Faithless Looting alongside Hogak, which is very possible, this card is going to sink like a stone. And if they don't, they just axe Hogak, well, that means that Is It Phoenix becomes the most dominant deck in Modern again, and this card is set to rise again. So let's just all take a break, let's wait another week, and then see what that announcement gives us. And if it's just Hogak, definitely pick up this card. If not, sell your copies. Let's move over to Modern, where the biggest loser of the week was Renin 6, a card that we can't avoid talking about for even a single week. It dropped five tickets this week from 106 down to 101, and you know, 101 is not that shabby. It is still the most expensive staple in modern by a pretty wide margin. The good news for all you strange people out there who want to see Renin 6 continue to gain in value for some odd reason is that there's less than two weeks left of Modern Horizons drafting on MTGO. After that point, you're not gonna be able to draft the set anymore or buy packs, so the available supply is gonna be cut off for a while. The bad news for Renin 6 future price, well, first of all, it's just really hard to maintain a 100 ticket price tag on MTGO, and also this card is going to be added to treasure chests at some point. So I don't see this card dropping off a cliff. I don't think this five ticket drop is the start of some scary trend, but over the long term, I'm still wary. Let's move on now to our sneak of the week. This week, it was Urza's Saga Uncommon Carpet of Flowers, and I really should have hit on this one before now. I kind of missed it. It flew under my radar. It was less than a ticket this spring. Seriously, you could buy about 10 of them for a ticket. Now it's about 10 tickets and continuing to rise in price. I think this is more of a low supply issue than anything else. It sees some play in Legacy and sideboards. That's really about it. Hasn't been reprinted in a long time. So at some point, it'll be in treasure chests again and the price will come back down. But for now, that price chart is pointed straight up. It will continue to gain in value based on what I'm seeing. So if you need these over the short term, you should pick them up now. If not, I'd hold off and see what the next round of treasure chests brings us. As always, we're going to end the week by taking a look at the MTGO Trader sales data over the past seven days, and this gives us a great idea of which cards are buying and selling the best right now, regardless of price increases or decreases. Looking at overall sales by volume, gang, we have to talk about Leyline of the Void again. Now, this card has been trending down over the past couple of weeks, and it's probably going to keep trending down when Hogak is banned and the card is less essential and modern, but it was still the best-selling card of the week by this metric by a pretty wide margin. And yeah, you know, the Hogak ban is coming, so I don't really think you should buy this card right now, and it does appear to continue to be eroding in value, but sometimes this sales data contradicts what appears to be common sense, and that's what's going on in this case, and it is worth knowing about that, because sometimes the sales data can be more predictive than the other things, and in that case, Leyline of the Void might be due to come back up again. In terms of overall sales by price, how could it be anything other than Renin 6? It's been Renin 6 for weeks, it's going to be Renin 6 for weeks, the only question is by how much. This week, it was a lot. It sold more than twice as well as the next best selling card by this metric, which is pretty standard at this point, but its sales figures, its raw sales numbers, were actually better than they were last week, and that's despite the price decrease. And that, again, tells me this card is not due to tank, because enough people want to buy in around the 100 ticket mark, I can't imagine that thing just falls off a cliff. People are buying in at the current retail price, they're buying in more this week than last week, it's not going to fall off a cliff. And well, that's all I've got for you. My name is Chaz Andres, thank you so much for watching, I will see you again next Monday morning for another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance.